Hello again. My name is uh, Pierre Charbonneau. I'm a senior IT consultant and the author on Java e support pattern at blogpost.com. Today's video will be again another uh, very common Java programming problem, especially for uh, Java beginners. Uh, you probably heard about it java.lang, the class not found exceptions. Very frustra frustrating exception that uh, many Java developers will get. So that's what we'll cover today via a simple Java program. Uh, it, I will also you also find a link from the YouTube video so you can uh, access the article from my blog and also download the simple Java program so I hope that you will appreciate this tutorial video today so let's start with a description of what this uh, class not found exception is all about now the, if you look at the API uh, on the Oracle Java site so let's first with a description of what it is. So you will see that the class not found exception is is pretty much strong when an application tries to load the class through the string of name using either the for name method in the class class, find system class on the class loader, and the load class method in class loader. Well, this tutorial will not provide you um, a deep dive on the class loader, but just right now keep it simple is that Basically, this exception is when the JVM is trying to load the class. This is not a type of exception that you will see uh, if you're not doing uh, any, uh, let's say, dynamic class loading or if you're not using any third-party API which, which does that. But as soon as you start playing around with uh, the class for name methods and, and dynamically loading a class or class order, or if, for example, you have a web application deployed to a Java container, well, this is a very common problem that you will face. So today, we'll, what we're going to do is, is pretty much replicate this problem uh, via the usage of class for name and also the usage of globe class, loading the class to uh, pretty much a class order. So, and I hope that you will be able to get some level of understanding of the exception after this tutorial. I also recommend you to consult the online Java documentation for reference information. So let's get started with a simple program. So at, as you can see, what we did is we created a simple Java program, which is called, which is basically just a simple Java class with a main method. And we created also a class that we call class a.java. Very simple, right? So the class name is called class not found exception simulator. And what the program does typically is that we can switch between problem scenario one or two. So you can, we can either enter one or two here. And here is a pretty much a final static string, uh, which we highlight the class that we want to load. Okay, so in this case, if you look at the class A, which is the classic very simple class, right? It simply has a, a static, which is trying to uh, pretty much print out the information about the class loader, current class loader. It has a constructor, which simply does a system out println. And then is calling a method called do nothing, which is indeed doing nothing. So very simple class, right? Just kind of a skeleton class. Uh, you can see this class is under the package uh, org.ph or java.e.training5 class A, right? So that's what we're trying to do. So instead of using new class A, we're going to try to do two things here. First, scenario number one, we're going to try to first do a, a dynamic class loading of this class class to load which is the class a right new class so that's what we're trying to do here and then we're going basically to print if this is that was successful so just to just initialize the class itself class not to create a new instance at that point okay so that's our number one using the uh, pretty much class dot for name the one that we mentioned uh, in the API documentation. The scenario number two, what we're first going to do is first get a reference on the current thread class loader, which is pretty much in a Java well. It's, that's a way for you to load the class, right? Uh, you can pretty much um, figure out which class loader you want to load a, a class to. In this case, we're just taking the current thread class loader. And then as you can see, what we're going to do is pretty much do a load class of this class. 
So not just get the class uh, reference or definition, but also in this case, we're going to attempt uh, to load the class to the class loader. And then we're going to create a new instance also of this class. As you can see, right? Object, new class instance. And then we're going to do a system out. You will see scenario uh, number two is a little more interesting than scenario number one, and this is a more typical scenario that you will get problem with uh, if you're if you're dealing with Java containers, okay? Which does which does that internally, uh, of course, and then you will see what type of error you're going to get, okay? So that's pretty much. So we'll start with a baseline run, meaning we want to get a successful run, right? class A, so far so good. So let's start with scenario number one. So what I'm going to do is just simply run this program, which is running from the Eclipse IDE, right? Very straightforward uh, Java program. So let's see scenario one output. Okay, so so far so good. As you mentioned, probably problem scenario number one, class for name. So the class loading of the class A, as you can see, right? As soon as you call the class for name, right what it will do it will do a class loading operation that's why you see it here right so class for name the first time the GVM is loading the class it will do a class loading and if in your class you have any static initializer and this will be the first portion of the code executed okay before you can even create any instance of this class so that's why you see that output here right class loading of class you see class Class from class loader, which is the application class loader, right? I'm running from Eclipse in progress. And then, you know, uh, then we get this message here. As you can see right now, we're not creating any instance, so you will not see this, right? You see, this is the output from the constructor. This will only be uh, logged if we create a new instance. Here, the class for name is just doing a class loading of the class, not creating any new instance yet, okay? So going back to the program, now we get the actual output. Class, new class, found successfully. There we go. So in this case, it means that we were able to successfully do a class loading of the class. This is our baseline run, right? And this is what we wanted to, to achieve. Now let's rerun that same scenario, but now what we're going to do is simulate the problem. Similar to, let's say you had a configuration problem in your application, you know, you're trying to do a class for name and, and you get a mismatch with the package name. Uh, in this case, we're going to do a typo. Instead of class A, we're going to put class B. Okay? So obviously there's no class B in our class loader, so let's see what is going to happen. There you go. You see, output, and then we get a class not found exception. Okay, because there's no such class B that exists, right? Remember, we only have class A in our program and our class path. Now let's see the stack trace. You can see that the class not found exception originate from our main at line 29, precisely uh, where we execute class dot for name. Okay, so it's very more simple scenario than our one because when you have the class for name, you will see that stack trace and then you can fairly easily identify which line of code and then it will tell you also which class it was trying to load, right? So in this case, you'll be able to figure out, okay, is there a, a truly class mismatch, for example? Uh, so that would be the more, the more simple scenario if you have a class mismatch. Uh, or it could be also at some point if, if you have a packaging problem, right? You may, maybe you did uh, you forgot to put uh, some classes in a jar file, and then the JVM will be complaining at, uh, at runtime, right, that this class was not found. So very typical scenario as you can see for the class for name and which is a little easier than resolve uh, than the scenario num number two. Okay so let me switch to scenario sum number two now and we're going to put back class A for the baseline run. So let me re-execute now with scenario number two the program. Okay so let's see the output of scenario number two. So prime number two load class Class loading, again, similar message, right? Class loading of class A in progress. Now, again, same thing. In this case, you can see, uh, now, remember, right, the problem number two, we're not doing a class for name. What we're doing, we're getting a reference to the current class loader, okay? 
of the application and then we attempt to load the class right to the, the actual class loader Wait, okay so similar to what we did in one this is going to trigger uh, a, a dynamic class loading but to the desired class loader in this case okay um, but then we do a third action then we want to create a new instance also okay of the actual class not just doing a class loading we also create an instance so let's see the messages right so class loading was successful which is the message from this guy now because we triggered new instance now we're going to see this message right because every time we create a new instance in this case we're using the default constructor so this guy is going to be executed you see creating a new instance of class a dot class that get name you see obviously that was a success and the class as you can see it's not doing anything and then we get this message success with the new class name you see class a this is the instance id so you see that our baseline run we did two things right loading a class to the desired class loader which was the current thread class loader context and then we created an instance of the class it's quite successful now let's rerun the program with the same typo class b and let's see what happened oh this time well first of all we get the exceptions but let's see what we get here okay we get class b not found okay and let's have a look at the actual line of code well, you see, this is actually happening at the load class, okay? So it's very similar to class for name. So, you know, class for name is dynamic class loading. It's obviously current uh, class loader. In this case, you're getting the same thing. You're trying to load the class to the class loader, right? And then, uh, again, and, uh, you will get the ex actual same exception. Because if you look at the stack trace, you will see the, the load class, you see what it does, right? It's, it's executing a load class, our current class loader. And our current class loader try to load that class, which delegates that to the URL class loader. So the GVM, our, at some point, is trying to find that class, right? And then that lookup operation is, is similar to what we simulated in class for name. It's not finding the class, which is why you get this class not found exceptions like this, because that class is just not found currently in the class loader. Okay, so again, see exact these two scenarios for name and load class. You will get uh, when you're dealing with web application, you will definitely get more often this guy because the Java container internally will be playing around with class loader. So instead of using class for name, it will be uh, playing around with the context class loader and doing something like this, right? Uh, loading class. So if you get into any exception like this, you will see a typical stack trace like this. Again, this is not something to be confused with no class def on error. In case you're familiar, this problem type is, is more common complex and sometimes it's, it's not due to um, uh, it's not necessarily due to cla class path problem it could be due to a class loader uh, tree problems uh, and and sometimes uh, static initializer failures so but you know you will typically see uh, sometime a, a tree of exceptions like class not found followed by a no class def on error because they, especially if you have piece of code failing for the first time they may end up uh, triggering no class def on error later on but keep in mind that these are always the two guys low class and class for name which are the most common and always start with the simplest uh, root cause at first so don't don't try to deep dive into too deep class order issues first validate your class path and very often most of the time just fixing your class path will be enough uh, to get rid of this problem okay so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as I mentioned you, you will be able to find the source code uh, from uh, my article from the blog uh, you will see a link below uh, the YouTube vi video uh, and please if you have any question please feel free to post any comment uh, on uh, from the YouTube video okay so I hope you appreciate this video and uh, have a good day.